Good evening again. This is Dr. Steve Soloway reporting to you live. Well, it won't be live by the time you're hearing it, but I have to make a joke here and there. Uh, reporting to you live from the arthritis news desk. Uh, sorry, I don't have any new information to tell you, but um, since you're the patient with a lot of questions, I need to explain things to you. So today's topic or this evening's topic is rheumatoid arthritis and I'm coming to you from my kitchen, okay? So today's office is my kitchen. Rheumatoid arthritis is not a joint disease. What? Rheumatoid arthritis is a systemic multi-organ disease with a predilection to the small joints in a symmetric pattern. Occasionally accompanied by a presence of a rheumatoid factor or the CCP antibody or the 14.3.3 ETA, which is 93% specific for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, according to the literature, it is also seen in erosive psoriatic arthritis. Frankly, I didn't know psoriatic arthritis did not come in a, in a um, I'm sorry, I thought all psoriatic arthritis was erosive. And frankly, psori um, sorry, arthritis mutilans is much worse than having rheumatoid arthritis. Although with biologic therapy, we don't see this too much anymore and it goes away quickly with good treatment. So, um, I mentioned that it's not a joint disease, so let me give you an example why I say that. Let's look at Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Those are bowel diseases, right? Well, not really. Uh, I would describe Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. Well, let's focus on Crohn's. Crohn's is a multi-system disease with predilection for the small bowel. And pathologically, there are granulomas as opposed to rheumatoid arthritis where there's rheumatoid factor, which is um, an antibody complex, antigen antibody complex, or an immune complex, I'm sorry. So most diseases affect everything. It's what do they affect the most that sort of defines them. Now, rheumatoid arthritis is a symmetric small joint arthritis However, it's really a multi-system disease with a predilection to the small joints. Now, when I say small joints, okay, here's a hand. These are the DIPs or distal interphalangeal. Distal means further away from my body. These are the PIP or proximal interphalangeal. Proximal is closer to my body. These here are the MCPs. By the way, if you wanna know why I've got all these blood stains, my stepdog, Leo, who is owned by my goddaughter, Justine. That dog, he likes to play rough. Now you should see what he looks like, but anyway, I got the blood stains. All right. Alzheimer's moment, forgot about what we're talking about, started talking about a dog. But anyway, these joints right here, the distal ones, they're not involved in rheumatoid arthritis. In fact, my professor, the most famous professor ever to live, he said if I ever told him rheumatoid arthritis occurred here, I should tell him that he didn't train me, okay? So it's these two, PIP and MCP. So small joint symmetric arthritis, that is symmetric, meaning it's on the left and the right, or it could be all of these with all of these. Uh, that is a sign that it could be rheumatoid arthritis. So. Females more than males, check. Um, honestly, I don't know if it's more in a white or black distribution because I work in a uh, area where one county is black, one county is Hispanic, one county is white. And I see tons of people with rheumatoid arthritis. So to me, everybody gets rheumatoid arthritis couple of tidbits about rheumatoid arthritis before I get to the meat of the action. Schizophrenia is mutually exclusive of rheumatoid arthritis. Interesting. Pregnancy is curative of 50% of rheumatoid arthritis. So if you're a woman with rheumatoid arthritis and you haven't had a kid, you get pregnant, you have a 50% chance it'll go away. The importance of that is not that you need to get pregnant more and more, but there's a hormonal component to this disease, which is why we can treat it well, but we still have not come up with a cure. And I will get to the treatments. Um, there are 
other parts of rheumatoid arthritis, and we call them extra-articular manifestations. Extra-articular means body parts that are involved from rheumatoid arthritis. However, they have nothing to do with the joints. So rheumatoid lung disease, it's a common thing. Now, the most common extra-articular manifestation of rheumatoid arthritis are subcutaneous nodules. What's a nodule? A nodule is a protuberance uh, from the skin that looks like an egg. It doesn't have to be that big, but it, as long as you get the picture, you feel a lump on your skin, depending on where it is, usually the elbow or one of the surfaces that gets pressure, you get a nodule. In the nursing home population, they get them on the back of their head because the head lies on the rocking chair. So nodules are one, rheumatoid lung disease is a big thing. So in rheumatoid lung disease, there's um, a handful of things. Pleurisy is the most common. This would be chest pain with fluid around the lung lining, rheumatoid nodules in the lung, which have to be dis differentiated from cancer, or interstitial lung disease. Now this is a hotbed of activity because there's many new treatments that are not great but at least they can help a little bit in the treatment of interstitial lung disease, whether it's related to rheumatoid arthritis or not. So if somebody goes to the hospital short of breath and they're told they have interstitial lung disease, one of the things you wanna make sure is that the interstitial lung disease is not their rheumatoid arthritis without joint disease. You can have that. So you can have rheumatoid arthritis that involves the joints alone, but you can have rheumatoid arthritis without the arthritis. Now in scleroderma, we call it sine uh, scleroderma, sine scleroderma, sine means without. So this, this applies for all diseases. So the other, the other things about rheumatoid arthritis, there are rashes. One is called pyoderma gangrenosum. It's a big ulcer that occurs on the lower extremity. I mean, I'm talking about a big ulcer, like, like really big, like that big. Um, People with rheumatoid arthritis frequently overlap with lupus. They overlap with Sjogren's syndrome. They get dry eyes and dry mouth. Um, people with rheumatoid arthritis, if they have it long enough, they can get protein in the urine. And this is from a protein called amyloid or amyloidosis, which would be secondary to the chronic inflammation. You can get rheumatoid vasculitis, which is chronic untreated arthritis, which leads to blood vessel inflammation and gangrene. Um, you can get Felty syndrome, which is a low white blood count and a very big spleen, again, in a chronic untreated rheumatoid arthritis patient. So don't think rheumatoid arthritis is only about the joints. Do take the treatment very seriously because there are many severe or very serious complications of not treating it. So years ago, rheumatoid arthritis was treated with high doses of aspirin. And by the way, aspirin lowers uric acid. So it used to be felt that gout and, and rheumatoid arthritis do not exist together. However, we do not use aspirin or NSAIDs by and large for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. What do we do? Well, methotrexate is the gold standard. Methotrexate takes about uh, six weeks or so to work. And again, this is not an in-depth lecture on methotrexate. You just need to know that methotrexate is the gold standard and typically combined with a TNF inhibitor. The TNF class, um, which includes um, the MABs, the monoclonal antibodies, it includes uh, Andril, Umera, Remicade, Aria, which is Golimumab, Simsia, which is some other Remab, um, Umera is Adalimumab, Andril is Entaricept, Remicade is Infliximab, you have biosimilars or basically generics of all these drugs. There's about nine altogether. If that class of drugs fails, we have interleukin-6 inhibitor, which would be Actemra or tocilizumab. Uh, there's another one out there, but frankly, if you have one, I don't think you need two. Although, you know, a few people might benefit from the fact that there's uh, more than one choice in a brand. Um, and... Uh, Probably the rheumatology community is split down the middle as to whether or not steroids should be used or not. In my population, I find that a very tiny dose of steroid is often very beneficial without risk of side effect. 
Uh, there are some people that think, uh, if you've watched Happy Gilmore or one of these movies, foosball is the devil. There are some people that think prednisone or Mejerol is simply the devil. Well, that's just not true. Um, if you want to be ethical about it, you ask yourself this question. Would you rather live 50 years from age 20 to 70 perfectly healthy and drop dead after 50 years, or would you rather live 60 years and be miserable? Well, okay, so I stick with the 50 years of quality versus the 60 years of miserable, and that's where the uh, low dose of steroid comes in. There's a lot of things I couldn't address because this is meant to be a short blurb for you people out there who need me. And I'm looking forward to seeing you, answering your questions. Hope you have a nice weekend. Happy Thanksgiving and New Year's. If you have a dog, give him a treat. Um, if you need a good movie, um, gosh, you've, again, I'll repeat some of these. You've got to watch Fast Times at Ridgemont High. You've got to watch Stripes. I mean, if you don't laugh at those movies, there's no hope for you. The other one with Al Pacino, uh, Scarface, terrific. Uh, there's another one with Robert De Niro. It's got 99% on the TV channel. I can't think of the name, but it's a Robert De Niro movie. Um, Goodfellas. So you got two dramas and you got two comedies. When you're taking your arthritis medicine, you're not feeling too good. Grab one of those movies and enjoy it and say I said so. All right, bye.